Hi everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Behind the Wheel. My name is Tom Luckin and I'm the Marketing Assistant at OSV. So on this week's Behind the Wheel, the Ford Mustang Mach-E takes to London roads. Driving in bad weather is a turn off for many and we got some more news for you from Jaguar Land Rover as well. Of course we're going to reveal who correctly guessed the car we were sitting in last week and as always have your say and guess the car we're sitting in this week. Let's kick this episode off with some news from Aston Martin. Obviously, the Vantage is one of the company's most popular models. It's certainly stunning to look at. But last week, the UK-based car maker unveiled a brand new Vantage, which isn't really ideal for the current weather situation, but come the summer, it's going to be perfect. The new Vantage Roadster is a convertible with a starting price of £126,960. For that price tag, you'll also get a 4 litre 510 horsepower V9 engine, the promise of summer wind in your hair, and a top speed of 190 miles per hour. The Roadster weighs 60 kilograms more than its coupe sibling and is only 0.2 seconds slower, and it can go for 0 to 60 in just 3.7 seconds. So, would you go for a slightly faster coupe or wait until autumn this year for the Roadster? Let us know in the comments. If you're lucky enough to be in Geneva next month for the Geneva Motor Show, watch until the end of the video for more news about that event. Hyundai is going to preview a new car at that event. The company has announced that they're planning to unveil a new concept car at the event, and this is called the Prophecy, which is supposedly going to start a new design era for the company. Right now, all we have been shown is a rear view image showing horizontal brake lights and a curved light bar. With so little to go on, we're just going to have to wait until the 5th of March to find out more about this new concept. So do you love your classic car and still enjoy driving it but you have some concern for the environment? Well then have you considered turning your classic car into an electric car? Last year at the London Motor and Tech Show there was a small display from a company who had done just that for a classic Jag and Ferrari and it seems that there are a few more companies out there that would be happy to do that for your classic car should you want them to. Aston Martin has its own department that will convert classic Astons from fuel burners to EVs. Called Heritage EV, they will rip out your gearbox and engine and replace it with an electric powertrain. Of course, if you change your mind at a later date, it's a completely reversible process. Electric Classic Cars not only swaps out your engine and gearbox for an electric powertrain, it can also build you an electric charging station that looks like a classic petrol pump. How's that for retaining classic styling? Swindon Powertrain got its start maintaining F1 engines and though they have continued in this field, they now also do classic conversions. There are other companies around the UK that carry out this kind of conversion work, but we thought with this story we'd give you a few ideas if you're interested. Now it's time to talk about the horrendous weather the UK has been seeing recently. First we had Storm Kira who brought strong winds and rain and then she was followed by her brother Storm Dennis. Of course, we're used to variety. It's a topic that British people bring up all the time. But why is it important in this case? According to recent surveys, and despite the fact that we have a lot of rain and strong winds, especially during the winter months, UK motorists feel completely unprepared when it comes to driving in harsher weather conditions. The research conducted by Young Driver, a pre-17 driving school in the UK, found that 20% of drivers asked admitted that they didn't feel confident or prepared driving in stormy weather conditions. If you're concerned about driving in harsher weather conditions, then do check out the article on our website's Learning Center, and we've also linked this down below in our description box. So do you feel unnerved when you have to drive in rainy and stormy weather? Let us know. It seems like the clean air debate is one that could go on forever. Obviously, public transport is one of the key solutions highlighted towards this. The use of public transport, along with cycling and walking, remain the best ways to avoid the fees that will be incurred by those who drive vehicles that don't meet requirements set out by the government. Many have asked about simply not going into the zones. This too is feasible, though as more and more are launched around the country, it may become more difficult. An all-electric vehicle, a low-emission vehicle that has a car with CO2 emissions of less than 50 grams per kilometer that can travel at least 70 miles without any emissions, any petrol vehicle that meets Euro 4 emission standards, or any diesel vehicle that is Euro 6 compliant. 
We've put together an article for people who'd like to find out more information about these limits and you can find that again in the description box below. If you're interested in finding out more about what Ford has got in store now that they're on the verge of releasing their all new electric vehicle, the Ford Mustang Mark e then you'll want to get behind the wheel or head on a train down to Marble Arch this week. Until Friday 21st of February, the Mustang Mark e will be making appearances around Marble Arch sporting the very appropriate banner, Go Electric. So if you're curious, why not head down there and have a look for yourselves? This is the first time that the Muck e has been seen in Europe since it was unveiled late last year, though the release date isn't scheduled to be until the end of 2021 and prices have not yet been confirmed, Ford is doing its best to generate a lot of interest in this new venture. If you were around in the early 90s, you may remember the shock and also a little bit of outrage when Princess Diana purchased an Audi 80 Cabriolet. Okay, it's not exactly the scandal of the century, but it wasn't considered the done thing for a Royal to drive a German convertible when they could be driving a British-made vehicle. The Gamera pale green Audi 80 Cabriolet, which was often used to ferry Princes William and Harry from school, has been put up for auction as part of the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show, which is being held at the Birmingham NEC on March 27th this year. If you're interested, this piece of British Royal history could be yours with bids starting at £35,000. So if you're looking for a way to spend some time, do head over to our Facebook and Twitter pages. We're really active with our communities on there and we'd love for you to get involved too. Every Thursday on Facebook, we run a poll trending to an item relating in the motoring industry in some way. And we'd love to hear your votes in that poll. And also every Thursday on Twitter, we run the Guess the Road Sun Challenge. This is getting increasingly popular now. We'd love for you to take part as well. So do get involved, check out the Twitter page every Thursday and have your say. On Sunday, we released our extended review of the practical and versatile business van, the Vauxhall Vivaro. So do check that out on our channel if you're interested in finding out more. We've actually got a change for normal broadcasting because on Wednesday, we're going to be uploading a review of the Peugeot 508 SW Estate. So keep an eye on the channel and check that out when it goes live. Next week, we'll be looking at Mercedes' first real foray into 100% electrification with the EQC. So to watch that video as soon as it goes live, make sure you've run that notification bell. If you're in the market for a new car, we've got some brilliant special offers on the Kia Exceed 3 this week. It's jam-packed with many amazing features such as a 10-inch touchscreen display with navigation, a brilliant 7-speaker audio system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity and much more. Plus, it's got a sizable boot space and it's got safety features such as driving attention alert, which make it a really ideal family and city car. If the Exceed isn't for you, then we've got many more impressive vehicles on offer this week. Get in touch with our vehicle specialist team who would be delighted to help you out. Now it's time for some industry news and it's from Jaguar Land Rover. They haven't had the best few years. First, we had news of global job cuts. They're gonna be getting rid of 4,500 staff, including 500 at their UK plants. And recently, the CEO, Ralph Speff, announced that he'd be stepping down from the role in September 2020. After this came the announcement that JLR's two UK plants would be operating under reduced hours for a month from the end of February in order to cut production costs due to falling demand for vehicles. And this week, Jaguar announced that they would be temporarily halting production of their award-winning and popular all-electric iPACE because they were experiencing a shortage of supplies of one vital component of the vehicle, the electric battery. Do you think things will pick up for Jaguar Land Rover? The beginning of March isn't just one month closer to the summer, it's also the beginning of the car enthusiast's favourite event of the year, the Geneva Motor Show. Last year, we were treated to previews of several new cars from Aston Martin, including the stunning Valkyrie and their new SUV, the DBX. So what do manufacturers have in store for us this year? Fiat will be showing off their brand new 500 model, an all electric version of their iconic city car. Audi will be giving us a view of their fourth generation A3 Sportback, complete with slimmer headlights and a brand new grille design. Renault has announced that they will be putting their new Twingo ZE, an all-electric version, on the stage. Unfortunately for anyone in the UK who's a fan, currently this model is intended only for Europe at the current time. 
For anyone who fancies having a look at what's on show at the event, it's going to be running from the 5th to the 15th of March, and we're going to be updating you on our Facebook and Twitter channels, so do keep an eye on them for news about some really exciting unveilings coming out of Geneva. The president of Ford of Europe has expressed concern over the UK government's announcement that they plan to ban the sale and manufacture of ICE vehicles by 2035, although this could actually happen sooner, it could happen in 2032. Stuart Rowley has said that he believes that the 2032 or 2035 ban will require an incredible amount of investment and a great deal of cooperation from the government, cities, the industry and consumers themselves in order to actually happen. The infrastructure of electric charging is something that Rowley also mentioned as being a concern. Many people are worried that they will have nowhere to charge an electric vehicle. It's true that there are now over 30,000 charging stations across the country, however there are few and far between in smaller towns, villages and very rural locations, which can make it harder for those who would consider an upgrade but don't have the facilities to currently do so. Having the right infrastructure in place is vital if either deadline is to be possible, but it's been acknowledged that this is going to require a considerable amount of financial investment. So do you believe that 2035 is too soon to be a feasible target? Let us know in the comments. So as always, be sure to guess the car that we're sitting in this week. It's a really, really stunning one this week. Congratulations are in order to no one. No one has guessed the car that we're sitting in last week. So do be sure to head over to our previous Behind the Wheel episode. And if you guessed already, have another go and you might get it right. We're going to reveal if you got it right in the next episode. So if you haven't subscribed to the OSV YouTube channel, what are you doing? Do that now. Immediately subscribe. No. <laughs> So be sure to subscribe to the OSV YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Ring the notification bell above to receive updates on when our latest videos come live to the channel. And if you're in the market for a new car, as mentioned earlier, we've got many amazing special offers on this week. So do check out that page on our website. We'll put the link below to where you can find that page in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you again next week and safe driving. Mm -hmm.